Hello, I'm Ed Kordick with the Iowa Farm Bureau, and this is one, a one video in a series of videos to support the Iowa Commodity Challenge Marketing Simulation, done in cooperation with Iowa State University Extension Outreach and the Iowa Farm Bureau. This one is on storing the cash bushels and buying a put option as a marketing strategy. Let me define a put option first of all. A put option is the right but not the obligation to sell the futures contract. So the futures contract is the underlying commodity in this case and it's the right and it's important. It's not an obligation. So the buyer of the option is going to pay a premium for price insurance to the downside. So this is for someone that's storing cash bushels in this example or if you, even if you've got a growing crop you can use a put option to protect against price risk of a growing crop. So if the market goes lower, the put option is actually going to gain value to offset the cash loss. Maybe not one for one, but it's there to protect against that cash price going lower. But if the market goes higher, and this is where the right part of the option comes into play, the only cost is that option premium that you pay. Think about options as price insurance and try to relate to other parts of your life as far as insurance. You pay a premium, it's gone, but you do have the protection. And in this case, it's not a protection against a car wreck, it's a protection against prices going lower. So let's do the strategy of storing those cash bushels and buying a put option against those cash bushels to manage downside price risk. And it is really, uh, it's a combination, those cash bushels in the bin or maybe in the field and the put option to manage that downside price risk. The put option is going to gain value as that price goes lower, as the market goes lower. And remember, as the market goes lower, those cash bushels, whether they're in the bin or if they're in the growing crop, are losing value. So that's what we're trying to mitigate as far as a risk. And, but if the market goes higher, those cash bristles are going to be gaining in value and that put option is only going to be limited to losing that option premium. Let's look at an example and let's say it's fall, October or November, and we want to store a crop until maybe late February, into February. We look out at the market and the put option strike price is at $4. So we can buy the right to sell futures at $4 out there in March corn. So that gives us the right to sell March corn futures at $4. The premium that we pay for that right is 21 cents. So we pay that through the brokerage to get that right to sell at $4. The estimated basis, since we haven't done anything with our cash commodity yet, it's just being stored, we have to estimate basis for out there in late February of 30 cents under. So the estimated floor price is $349. And in all these examples, we don't include commissions and interest. Just remember that would, um, first of all, muddy up my math. But secondly, it would be something in real life you'd want to consider as you get down toward the net position. I'm keeping my math real simple here, saying that the estimated floor price is just the put option strike price, less the premium, less that estimated basis. So let's look at a table that tries to estimate where our results are over a wide range of futures outcomes because we don't know what futures will do between November and late February. So we need to kind of cover our bases and make sure this whole strategy, the cash position in the bin and the put option to manage downside risk makes sense and operates well under a full range of price outcomes. So in the left hand column there you can see I'm starting to analyze over a $2 range. The market can go a dollar higher from where I start or a dollar lower. So if I'm going to analyze this $4 put option in the second column, that's, that's where I'm going to put that worth of that option. But first of all, if I started at $4, you can see that I'm starting at 4 and going up in 25 cent increments from the middle of the table up, and then I'm going down in 25 cent increments from the middle of the table down. So that's my futures price outcome. Let's say that's the expiration of the option. Late February, the option is expired and we don't have any time value or anything left. And it, these terms in, in options are important to understand. We do have another video in this series that explains some of those terms. So this $4 put, the right 
to sell futures at $4 is going to be worth something at different futures contract outcomes. So the futures outcomes on the lower half is what we're going to co concentrate on right now. So if the market went down to 375, what would the right to sell futures be at $4? So I've got the right to sell them at $4, but the market's gone down to 375. Well, that's going to be worth 25 cents. The right to sell futures at $4, if the market goes down to 350, is going to be worth 50 cents. And all the way down to if the market goes down as low as $3 in this example in late February, the right to sell them, sell that same futures contract at $4, is going to be worth a full dollar. So that's the option worth all by itself. If I look at late February and the option expires when futures prices are right at that strike price that I bought, $4, that option is basically going to be worthless. As an option, it's not worth anything because the market's already at $4 at expiration. Where options get interesting is where I can't lose anything on the upside on a purchased put option. So if I click in these other market outcomes on the top part of the table, let's spend a little time on that. If the market goes to 425, what's the right to sell futures at $4 going to be worth? It's going to be worthless as an option because I can go to the market and sell it at 425, a much better value. And all the way up to $5. If the market wants to go to $5, I'll let it. All amount is my premium and I'll take care of that in a second. And that option is going to be worthless because the right to sell futures at $4, I'm just going to walk away from it and I'm going to enjoy that $5 futures price for my sold commodity. Just like car insurance, I've got to factor in that premium regardless of what happens to the market. So I paid my premium for car insurance. In this case, I paid my premium for price insurance and I subtract 21 cents in all market outcomes. That equals, and you're just doing simple math here, the net futures column, and that's going to be, you know, 350, for example, at 350, I gain 50 cents from the option, I subtract my 21 cent option premium, and I get that 379 for my futures price floor. But on the upside, you can see that that's increasing. At $5, I don't have any more option loss, zero worth. I lose only the premium and it's $4.79. Now I've got to relate it all the way back to the farm gate, all the way back to the, the cash market we use in the marketing simulation, Iowa Commodity Challenge, which is a central Iowa cash market at Bondurant. So let's say the basis estimate is 30 cents. I can do the math across and you can begin to see that I've got upside potential if the futures market wants to go up to $5. I can get a better value for my cash commodity because the option just expires worthless. But down here, you see that floor developing? That's at a price that I can live with at, at a price that really does a good job for me that I calculated earlier. So there's my price floor developing no matter where the market goes to the downside. So $3.79 less $0.30, cents, regardless of where that futures price outcome, I've got a 349 minimum price. And maybe that covers all of my variable costs and contributes toward my fixed costs and does a good job of managing my risk. That's the choice that I have to make. So I've got upside potential and a floor price. One of my favorite charts in all of marketing, it's not a very technical chart, but in this chart you can see the effect of an option compared to staying open in the cash market in the blue or hedging or forward contracting in the black. The market varies on the horizontal axis here, plus and minus. On the vertical axis is the farm price that I get. If I hedge, I know what price I'm going to get at the farm. If I don't do anything, I'm on the blue line. I've got all the risk in the world and all the potential in the world at the farm price. But you see that red line? It develops a price floor. So it mitigates some of the price risk to the downside, but also allows me to participate on the upside as the market goes positive to the right. I think that's an important, although options aren't one for one, this is an important concept to remember that options can give me price risk management to the downside, but also upside potential. And this is our crop marketing matrix, which is in our marketing tool 
workbook that you can access at this same website that you got the video at. And what I was at in there was that quadrant down there to the left, wasn't I? I was managing downside price futures risk, but I was still open to basis getting better or basis getting worse. So I'm in that quadrant of hedging or a hedge to arrive that doesn't roll or what I did in this example, which was buying that put option. Protecting price, but not necessarily basis. So what are the key points of this strategy in this video? The put option is gonna gain value as the market goes lower, and that's important to remember because those cash bushels, whether they're in the bin, or you can use this strategy for a growing crop also in the field, those cash bushels are losing value as the market changes lower. If the market goes higher, let those bushels go and, and reap that high return, and all I've got invested is my put option premium. That's all I'm gonna lose. It's the strike price, less the premium, less that estimated basis is gonna equal that estimated floor price. And basis is very key when all I'm doing is buying a put option versus a growing crop or bushels in the bin. So that's been this video of a series looking at the marketing tools for the, to support the Iowa Commodity Challenge.